go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're back. You know, I checked. The last time we did one of these shows was yes. July 9th. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So much has happened since then, including the news on Monday that surfing is now the official sport of California. Less said about that, the better, because every time he talks about surfing, he, indul <laughs> he insults surfers, and we're trying to stay away from that. They are athletes, but it's not a sport. I do have some breaking news. Okay. I think I just told you, I don't know if John knows this. Apparently, this is a real thing. Kobe Bryant has announced he is coming out of retirement, I swear this is real, to play in that big three league. Oh, okay, thank God. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not that. It's not that breaking news. But I, I, I was like, seriously, like, is it April? I, is that for real? This guy has so much else going. Why does he want to play in the big three? Okay, so is this going to calm the people down who are throwing paint all over the place on, on LeBron mm. murals? Are they just going to... Is that, is, does that mean they'll play a, a, one of those big three tournaments in L.A.? Because I don't think the schedule right now has them in it. Well, they would have to. They would absolutely have oh, to. Oh, it would sell out, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, apparently, you know... So it's all about the money. Ice Cube runs this whole thing. Right, he Ice Cube. keeps asking him and asking him. and It says he's going to start next year for the whole season. Oh, next year, okay. Why? I don't know. Anyway, welcome to the drill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll drill down on that one. I don't one. really care. I guess, I guess, Tommy, what you're saying we is... We need to reset. People really don't care about Kobe Bryant in Southern California, so I get it. Yeah, that's good. It's a LeBron thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're all, we're all in on LeBron. I certainly don't. No. <laughs> Did you capture your facial expression when he said Kobe Bryant is going to play again? Did you get that on the show? I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I didn't. <laughs> I, I wanted didn't to want see it to, uh, <laughs> just because my total look of disbelief. Yes, it was disbelief and angst and frustration and more like, oh, I hope I don't do this in my mouth. <laughs> well, hey, we've been on kind of a summer vacation. Uh, Tommy and I have been uh, doing a little uh, kind of podcast that you can find on Game Takes. We have it on our Game Twitter Game Takes feeds. is an app that we got involved with. It's really kind of a cool thing. We, it allows us to do it on our phones, and we've been doing it. Uh, we've been doing it every morning called the Morning Briefing, Daily uh, the Drill Morning Briefing. That's been a lot of fun. John has been everywhere covering... Well, sort of. Okay, so where, where have you been? Uh, mostly San Bernardino and Portland, Oregon. So San Bernardino, California. Yes. Out in the uh, Inland Empire right. desert area. On Route 66? Uh, 215, right off 215. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we did seven days of Little League softball there. And that was four games a day on average. Whew. One day was three games. One day was two. Um, and then we did 20 games in Portland which was the whole pool play, which right. then ESPN2 came in and picked up the rest for the eliminations in the championship game and stuff like that for Little League softball. Who was the big winner? Ohio. Was it really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio won their, uh, the first ever for the state. Ohio. Oh, my God. Wow, we. Do you want yeah, to? Me and the one coach had a bonding moment. We have the exact same uh, Notre Dame tattoo <laughs> on our calves. Was it the Ohio coach? Yeah. Oh man. Now, do they go back to Williamsport, or what? What, ha what happens with them? No. So it's softball. Their final, their final spot, their Williamsport, yeah. is in Alpenrose Dairy in Portland, Oregon. Oh. Oh, so that was it. Yeah. That oh, was it. okay. Oh, great. Were you? It just sounds exhausting, though. It is exhausting. It's a lot of long days. Yeah. Uh, four Little League softball games a day, oh. which uh, some end at three innings, four innings. Okay. Most, once we got up to Portland, everything was pretty much six innings. So these are all 12-year-old girls? 12, 13, as young as 10. But no boys. No boys. Boys cannot play softball, but girls can play baseball. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I, well, I'm just pointing it out. Oh, God. First with the surfers, now with the softball. You're just you're trying to destroy this. You're just trying this. to go down a... They let girls now join the Boy Scouts. You know that. Well, it fine. Good. Well, if they want to sell popcorn instead of selling cookies, good for them. I should have known something was up when you didn't want to talk about Kobe. No, but what I do want to talk about is a piggyback to that Little League experience. Is we've had this discussion on our podcast this morning. Again, it involves the Little League World Series in Williamsport. Yes. You have eight American teams and you have eight international teams. Mm -hmm. One of the international teams that's still alive in the tournament is Puerto Rico, um, which is a U.S. 
it's technical, but basically it's a U.S. territory. It's territory. Yeah, yeah. But they've kicked them over to the international bracket. Yes. And haven't they been through enough already with Hurricane yeah. Maria and I've everything? Never, well, this is... Do you have an insight on that? normal operating business on international sports, though. Puerto Rico has its own Olympic, Olympic team. team. Right. They were their own representative in the World Baseball Classic. Yes. They basically operate as an independent country on the end of on international sports but as isn't it standard time operating procedure they don't because we were talking about this this morning this is the danger after the hurricane happened hurricane maria in, in puerto rico there just seemed to be this disconnect between the country and puerto rico people are like oh gee that's too bad well hope you guys can figure that out on right. your own it's like that's America. And Those our government Americans was embarrassing. The government was embarrassing the way they handled it. And, the whole and thing. I don't know if you guys saw, but there was this horrible video. Do you see this, uh, John? Where this this drunk guy at some park starts berating this woman for wearing a Puerto Rican T-shirt and saying you should wear American shirts. And she says, uh, right. "Listen, I'm an American citizen. I'm from Puerto Rico." And he goes, "Well, then you're not an American." I'm just. I don't understand. It's a it's a it's mixed message Americans. you're giving to twelve year old kids that yes, you're a country, but we don't accept you completely as Americans. And and, they, I, and I understand logistics of trying to get the kids to the mainland to play, but how different is that than Alaska having a team yeah, in Alaska or Hawaii right. where you have to play these games? Exactly, which you pointed out, Hawaii and Puerto Rico could actually meet in the final, which would be so beautiful. Right. Which would just would just be great. It'd be an all American final that no one would acknowledge as being American. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, you're either a citizen or you're not. Although, of course, that's up for debate these days, apparently. Right. But yeah, I, I just that has always thrown me fr from the 1976 when the U.S. American basketball team in the Olympics almost got beat by the Puerto Rican team led by Butch Lee who played for Marquette and later right. for the for the Lakers on one I think on one of the uh, Showtime teams I, yeah. I don't know what the re resolution to this is or whether it just is going to keep going on but we sort of have to bring this up I think it needs to be discussed at least acknowledge yeah. you know the, the pros and cons the hypocrisy and the legitimacy of this whole discussion this whole situation Yeah I I can think of a lot of other places in the United States I'd rather separate out and, and, and they i'm not gonna say just because but, you're yeah, geographically yeah. close to us does yeah. not make you you know yeah actually some parts in in this state actually mm -hmm. yeah it's the state they're trying to break into three pieces Sp which yeah. was taken off the ballot by the way by a judge oh. yeah oh. interesting very disappointing but they so you're touching a lot of very sensitive political yeah. waters getting yeah. into this conversation you know that right yeah i do but hi there so this isn't something we typically do uh, but what you're witnessing right here is we got into a topic that we don't know enough about and we really shouldn't have been talking about it. Nothing offensive, it's just it really shows our lack of knowledge on the entire topic. So right now I'm just wasting time until we can get to the end of this. I think we're dumb. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, we're speaking of that, um, the Little League uh, World Series is about, it's about baseball. Not just about politics baseball. and me not knowing much Many about it. Many Puerto Rican stars and then in the... I went to a baseball game yesterday at baseball. Dodger Stadium. We left in the seventh inning. The game, John... Well, of course you did. Typical already Los Angeles fan. Typical L.A. fan who left the game in the seventh inning after it had been going on for three hours and 15 minutes. That doesn't minutes. matter. Yes, it does. Okay. And... The game, by the way, ended up being a four-hour, ten-minute game. One of the longest. How many solo home runs were hit? <laughs> it, it, actually, no, I don't think there was a home no. run hit. It was just... Hey, you guys can't complain then. <laughs> it was boring. <laughs> it was, oh my Lord, so many uh, trips to the mound. It was long and laborious and... Now I, you're sounding like Charlie Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was awful. And I think I was telling you, like, now when you go to a game... You are inundated with information, like up on one of the scoreboards. It's nothing but, it isn't just your average, your home runs, your RBIs. It's your war, it's your OPS, it's your OBPS. It's just, oh Breakdowns. my lord, it's your Launch social angles. security number. Launch angles is there. Uh, bat speed is there. We actually were betting on bat speed because that's how <laughs> bored we were. It was ridiculous. And then, and then of course... The only thing entertaining is when Pedro Baez comes in. And what is his walk-up song? I mean, they bring him out of the bullpen. What the, do they do? The, is the, it just like, dun, 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 dun? <laughs> the song is the actual 
uh, vocal anguish that you hear it's, going it's, it's through it's the like, oh, I think it's, is it, oh my God, it's bias. Oh, it's bias. No, no it's not bias. Yeah, it, it comes through the whole thing. But you know, at that moment I was watching the game, my phone died. I recharged it. I got it fully charged before that inning ended. It was a yeah. 40 minute ending, a 40 oh. minute inning. It was awful. I never charged my phone that fast. <laughs> it was it, amazing. It was just awful, and it was dull, and it was boring. And this, you know, there's a, there's a piece right now by a, a terrific writer, um, Scott Miller. Scott Miller, for who, the Bleacher Report, who said, "Look, this isn't just us whining about it. Major league players, great major league players, are saying, you know, the the game's really kind of very slow and now. I, you know, I did a, happening. I did a Q and A with Bob Costas before he got into the Hall of Fame thing in July." His take on this, and I thought he would just really go off on it because you love to talk about Bobby just go into the game. He goes, it's not better, it's just different. And I said, eh. And then, but he pulled up the stat that uh, Tom Verjuicy had pulled up, which he basically put a timer on the game, and the ball is in play maybe three minutes total per game. Right. I mean, that's ground outs to first. I mean, that's right. 15 seconds, right? But it adds up. But that doesn't add up because of the three major things happening in a game is a home run, a walk, or a strikeout. Right. Almost none of them involve a ball in play. Right. You know, in, in play that you actually can embrace and, and enjoy. Yeah. So if that's what the game is, yeah, it's different, but it sure as heck is not more enjoyable to watch. Here's a couple things. Number one, constant mound uh, visits, right? Now, they've tried to limit these, but they still take forever. And here's, here's my thing about baseball. I get it like in the NBA or the NFL. Hey, time out. Come on, let's talk. Calm down. Okay, what are you doing? Baseball is a timeout. There's, it's rarely is the ball actually in play, like in a pitch or whatever. Mostly, it's just guys standing around right. looking at each other, talking to each other. The opposite of hockey and basketball. And like, how many times do you have to go out to say, hey, by the way, throw it over the plate. Okay, that's good, 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 yeah. Well, good, the point good. that Oral Hershey was making on the Sportsnet LA broadcast last night, which was also on Channel 5, is when he was pitching, he was told that your brain can only remember something for 12 seconds. Right. So if you have this euphoric feeling of throwing a strike, you'll forget it after 12 seconds. So if you want to keep your momentum going, you keep pitching. So he goes, he, he told himself 10 seconds per pitch, 10 seconds per pitch. Okay. Either erase the bad one or start. The, right. Baez was doing 24 seconds between pitches, right? which is apparently somewhat normal. I mean, the, the average is about 20 seconds. Oh, no, it, it, was, it, it was awful. And here's the thing. In, I think in, in basketball and football, you can actually change the rules to encourage more offense. I don't think there's no. anything you can do about that in baseball. No. I mean, I don't Speeding know. Speeding up the game has to be a process of that's rewarded in some way. Right. And it doesn't seem to be. You just have these clocks on there. Again, numbers. We look up on the, on the, uh, the scoreboard now and we see this stat that each team has a six on it and it says mound visits or something. And they have yeah. it abbreviated where you don't even know what that means. Right. So who leads the league in that category? I don't know, but it's a number up there you have to keep track of now. Yeah. And and the the batter stepping in and out, I, I really do think it's pitcher related and it's again analytic driven because of the the tightening of the pitching participation in the game. Yeah. Where you run out of pitchers again, you're, you're in a situation when the Dodgers had the other night an, an infielder is pitching the last inning because they yeah. want to the, the Mariners want to save their pitchers and and this infielder ends up hitting Manny Machado, Machado. and and it, it appeared he broke his hand yeah. at, at first. Uh, this thing used to be kind of fun, right? You just bastardized right? the were, whole game. Yeah, when the shortstop of, backup shortstop, like, oh, ha, ha, it's, it's funny. not a blowout anymore. But when they're now, in. It, now it's dangerous. It's now saving pitchers. Old men yell at clouds. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the, the hey, I'm telling you, <laughs> you really like that voice. Back in our day, and the balk. Right. Don't get me started on the balk now. Man, you're loud. The hey. balk. Let's do some business. You had two box you had to watch last night. Two? Yeah, yeah two, two That's box. That's exciting. <laughs> and no one even and knows, no one knows what, the, what happened. What, like, what was that? He I, flinched. I was telling him, it's like, remember those days, John, when like <laughs> these guys with too much, uh, guys yelling at clouds would call the PGA and say, oh, Craig Stadler's uh, shoe's untied. So that's a four-stroke uh, penalty. I used to bartend at a country club with a, golf course like that didn't have a pool or anything else do you know how much shit i had to hear about <laughs> yes. how tiger should have been eliminated because oh, he went right. two feet back or some bullshit yeah oh my god oh could the 
get the <laughs> pro. Get the pro. Let him break out the rule book. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he was stupid. Oh, oh my God. God. Then no they would call the network, and the network would have to report well, it to somebody, thing. right? I can't get, like, customer service for DirecTV. <laughs> How did these guys find the guy to go up to say, oh, yeah, Tiger, uh, two-stroke minimum. Never. Like, how did they know that? I don't know. Those guys you're talking about, those are the guys who make all the HOA rules and stick yeah. to them. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. same, same type of people. Oh, oh, yeah. Jesus. Right. Yeah. What's your refrigerator doing in your garage? You got to move it. Some oh, business. you have two trash cans outside <laughs> of the designated area on the left side of your garage. Can't you see the lines? That They're the reason that when people say, are you a golfer to me? I say, I golf. I'm not a golfer. You don't want to be a golfer. Yeah, that's a whole culture. Hey, let's do some biz. Some business. Business time. We have a story in the Los Angeles Times today, which place has been a nice freelance uh, home for me lately this summer. Again, what did you do this summer? I got a nice gig with the LA Times. We'll Welcome see, to El Segundo. We'll see what happens. Yes. Exactly. I haven't been in the office. I just do it, work from home. Oh, that was to the LA Times. Oh, not yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, the story I wrote today had to do with a commentary about the whole Clipper situation with Bruce Bowen, who was let go. Well, not let go. He was not renewed with his contract because of what turned out to be an excuse that he made some not so flattering comments about Kawhi Leonard which somebody in the Clipper hierarchy decided was going to prevent them from possibly signing him as a free agent next summer. So the Clippers got put through the ringer a little bit about this, but the, but the whole point was to my story was who actually employs Bruce Bowen or who hired him in this case? The actual employer is Fox Sports West Prime Ticket. And in most cases, the team employs the talent. In this case, Fox is assuming the cost, the HR expenses and all that stuff with the talent, which you would think would make them more immune to this kind of a situation. If you're employed by the media person, you're actually expected to be a little more less biased, yeah. less of a homer. You right. can you can be a little more opinionated. Well, Bruce was serving two masters. Yes, he could be opinionated as he was when he was working at ESPN as an analyst in their studio. Now you're a Clipper, you work for a local team, the rules kind of change, and I don't think he really understood it as much, and that was the excuse used to sort of say, no, we're not interested in you this well, coming back. Well, the thing is, too, when he was being interviewed, he was being interviewed as a former Spur. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's that the was thing. a totally absentee yes. from what he was doing as a Clipper representative. Well, we were talking about the fact a while ago, who does this make look worse? Does it make the Clippers look good uh, to Kawhi for saying like, hey, see, we're going to do right. anything we have to do. Right. Or does it make them look pathetic that they, that they are literally willing to do anything um, to get, you know, oh, please, we'll, we'll get rid of this, we'll get rid of that, you know. Uh, it made them uh, look insecure. And, and Apparently getting rid of most of their team, I guess, is what they, they thought Kawhi wanted. Like, right. yeah, The other no point was if Kawhi would not join the Clippers because of this, I mean, what does it say about Kawhi? Because you, you play for a team that you think you're going to, have a good successful right. run with it has nothing to do with who's broadcasting the games because in this fact in this case um the talent can turn over in, a, in an instant right. if someone's not happy with them so i guess it was another teachable moment it was worth sort of explaining to readers uh, about how the, the business works and um well this points out what we've been talking about pretty much from the start here is that that more and more sports is a television show and we got into this when we were talking about uh, the person who does the uh, dugout stuff for the, the Dodgers high-fiving right. uh, Dave Robertson. We're right. like, mm, do you really want to be doing that? It's this constantly evolving thing where more and more, I think, we've, we've always said the play-by-play -play person, pretty much that, that hasn't changed in decades. You just call the action. It's that other person. Are they going to be seen as a homer? Are they going to be someone who is going to give you a general analysis without as much bias? Yeah. And as we were saying, in other parts of the country, I think it's much more common to have homers. But here in L.A., because of Hearn, because of Scully, and because there's so many transplants here, we've tended to have uh, analysts who are a little less biased. I'm not saying that they're totally unbiased, but well, the, a little less. The play-by-play -play guy was usually the star of the show. And in mm -hmm. case Vin, he did it by himself, so he didn't right. have an analyst. Um, with Chick and with Bob Miller, they were pretty much running, setting the tone, and they played it down the middle because that's how they were trained. That's how they were brought up. They were, right. they set the tone. But now, when you have a new, this new era of broadcasters come in, it's really the analyst who's the star of the show. Right. And 
you know, for better or worse, they can have their opinions about things, but they just have to realize there's consequences. Is this the Barkley effect? Does everybody want to have a Charles Barkley? <laughs> I think it now? is. As a national broadcaster, you can be as Barkley as you want because you again you drop in, you parachute in, right? You make your comments, you go to the next game. Now you don't have to travel with the team, you don't have to eat with the team, yeah. You don't have to see the team. You get shut out by something you said about them on the broadcast. It, it's it's a dynamic that just is sort of a conflict of interest, but one that you sort of have to understand and toe the line. And then we find out today uh, the, the Toronto Raptors, where Kawhi Leonard plays right now, we're saying this, of course, because rumors are eventually Kawhi Leonard would like to join the Lakers to team up with LeBron, and that would be a... And that was Bruce Bowen's point. He says, I heard him talk about the Lakers. I never heard him talk about wanting to play for the Clippers. Clippers, yeah. <laughs> and Bowen brings up a great point that if you're not coming to Los Angeles because of Bruce Bowen. If you can't get a free agent to come to Los Angeles... Bruce Bowen ain't the Bruce reason. Bowen, yeah, Bruce Bowen ain't the reason. <laughs> but anyways, there's the story today that uh, the Toronto Raptors had hired one of Kawhi's friends. This is getting to be middle school, is what this is. <laughs> is like two guys going after a young lady and, oh, well, here, I'll give you my, my lunch and I'll give you my, you know, Twinkies and all this kind of crap. And... and uh, I just think it's going to keep going on and on, and I don't think it's a good look for the Clippers. It has they look been. too desperate, yes. which, of course, is kind of what the Clippers are. They've always been. Johnny, any thoughts about that? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beto. <laughs> you know, um, speaking of that, is we have been speaking of that basketball all summer, and we, we were mentioning that we're getting really close to football season. And the Yay. Right, yes, there, John's Johnny's back happy. with us. You've got, you've got Chip Kelly at UCLA. No one's talking about it. You got USC starting a new season. USC is the de facto pro team. No JT one's really Daniel. talking about it. The Rams are an absolute bona fide Super Bowl. Oh, I think I lost What'd you do? Did you pull your cord? Do you want talking to my mic? <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, that's a... <laughs> your, your headpiece is looking like a Ladies helmet. <laughs> It's just the worst show we've ever done. It's by far the worst show. I'm glad show we ever. haven't practiced before. I, I don't know what happened. Something happened. <laughs> These things are coming all down on me. Look at them. They're like all. Oh. This is the worst. Look, it's John. Hello. How are you doing? To dream. Oh, Lord. This is. Wow. There we go. Are we doing better? Yeah, you're Hello? back. Hello? You're back. Hello? You're Hello? back. There we go. He's back. Yeah, what happened? I don't know. I don't right. know. Anyways. You broke it somehow. So you, you were you were talking about Roman Gabriel. Yes. I was talking about the fact that LeBron coming to the Lakers <laughs> has totally short-circuited, I think, for for many Southern Californians, football. And, and it's a great football year. The Rams are a bona fide Super Bowl contender. The Chargers are very good, uh, look like they'll be a good team. And then you've got two really interesting college teams. And you can't eliminate Nobody. the Raiders because of their old L.A. base, as they showed last week. And yet we're not, we're not really talking about them. Uh, it, people kind of go, oh, did they sign Aaron Donald? No? Oh, okay. Well, thanks. You are excited. Everyone outside of Los Angeles right. has been talking about the Rams all year. Right. Really? It's, it's incredible. They, they not just have a good team. When you actually start to talk about it, you're like, this is a team that made the playoffs that probably should have beat Atlanta. They add a great wide receiver, tons of guys on defense. The quarterback figures to be better because he's a year older. And in any other community, I think people would be over the moon. But you bring LeBron into a place that is already crazy about basketball and nobody's really chatting about it. And Machado and, you know. That's true. And of course, there was a story in the LA Times the other day of Eric Sonheimer, which kind of hints at this, which is now more people, many more kids are playing soccer in high school than football. In L.A., right. Yeah. It's, it's a problem with, with uh, high school programs shrinking and shrinking and soccer programs. The coaches are going through crazy cut downs and things that they never had to go through before. I wonder if pretty soon we're going to be playing. What was it? ESPN did a thing on this. Uh, is it seven-man football, eight-man football eight man. in Texas? But the, yeah. the irony... <laughs> There's a couple teams in Southern California that play eight-man. See, the irony is these Texas teams that do it, they're in some little Texas town of like... Like 150 Like 150 people. people. Right. That's where you do it. But what are you going to do when like, you know, L.A., Gardena, like, you know, Mission Viejo was playing eight-man football because they can't get enough guys to come out. 
And you know what? This is exactly what everybody predicted. California would be the first domino to fall in the mom is not going to let her, her kid play football anymore. That's going to happen. Thank God for Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, and Texas. And the South. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? This is just going to contribute to California has always been the mother's milk of the Pac-12. Anytime you saw a team rise up like when when uh, Oregon did, when Washington did, when Arizona State did, you could always go and find all the California kids on their roster. Well, apparently there's not going to be enough to go around anymore. And we were talking about this, John. The Pac-12, I think, is in real danger now, football-wise, of becoming its own kind of island. You'll have the, the top four conferences. You'll have the mid-majors down here, and you'll have the Pac-12 right about here. Kind of where the Big 12 is and that whole weird range. Yeah, yeah the Big 12 right now, uh, as far as gambling is concerned, has a smaller chance of landing a team in the playoffs, college football playoff, than Notre Dame or, I think, Boise State. Yeah. No kidding. And yet, didn't they do pretty well in the bowls last year? The Big 12? They did all right. They did okay. The Pac-12 did disastrously. They won one game, right? Yeah. Pac-12 yeah. didn't do well, and the SEC did not do well. But that's because people expect so much from the SEC, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um... But as you were saying, USC is coming off a horrible bowl game. Horrible bowl game. Well, if you if you look at, you know, you're saying, oh, nobody's talking about this stuff. Okay, yeah. Chip Kelly at UCLA right. hasn't done a damn thing since Oregon. Was a right. complete failure in the NFL. It's well, a, it's it was a suspect a failure hire in the NFL. In the yeah. So right. it was kind of a uh, name grab right. kind yeah. of hire. Right. Don't know what you're going to get out of him. No. You just had your starting quarterback get drafted by the Jets at UCL or right. at UC, USC. USC. Right. So you're going through a whole new transition with a new quarterback, new system, whatever's going on there. Yeah. And then there's nothing to chew on yet. Yeah, yeah but, but there's but, but, nothing but, there yet. That's exactly my point. Sometimes the unknown makes for interest. Like, well, right now with the Lakers, like, what the hell are the Lakers going to be? What are they going to be like with LeBron? The fact that no, like you said, people here just are not talking about it. I totally forgot Chip Kelly was at UCLA. Like, oh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. And I don't know, maybe once the season starts and delivers from baseball, thank God, maybe people will be into it. But maybe maybe fantasy will get people into it. Do you do the fantasy thing? I am the commissioner Ooh, do you of do it with the Proctor? Pro Angle Office League. Really? Who won last year? Uh, our current graphics operator, Nick. Mm. And who was MVP, the, the best player in your fantasy league? Uh, well, that's the winner, right? Well, no, how no, does, no, no, no. Like, who was the, the best player? Who was, who was the best? Uh, I probably had the best team, but I came in fourth. Why? Because you just didn't want it? Yeah, you know, my you players really, they really let me down the last two weeks. <laughs> so you're holding a draft. Who would be the top three got to have one of these guys? Top three right now, it's all running backs. Really? Gurley's one of them. Yeah. Wow. Um, David Johnson from Arizona is pretty high up there. Wow. Le'Veon Bell's always high up there. Um, yeah, those are. It's that, not a that's quarterback. Who I'd go three. It's not a quarterback three. thing anymore. No, you don't take a quarterback till the fifth round. Wow. See, I don't understand that because wow. I played it back in the eighties when it was first starting out, and you like you had to get Dan Marino. That was I'll oh, get Dan Marino <laughs> or get Joe Montana, and now that's totally flipped, right? You can is get it, it doesn't a yeah, quarterback doesn't get quarterbacks you as much. aren't all that important. Mm. I mean, in our league, they are is because it, we've it, kind of prioritized the scoring to, right. to help that's quarterbacks. Just the emphasis on the scoring is it is it when a when a player scores a touchdown, it's the player and the quarterback if he if he throws it to him, or is it yeah so. On a pass, typical league standard scoring, uh, a passing touchdown is only worth four points, whereas a receiving touchdown or a rushing touchdown is worth six points. Okay. Oh, now I'm understanding. Okay. But our league, we prioritize. Well, we've made quarterbacks a little bit more deadly, uh, yeah. let's say. So in our league, all touchdowns are just six points. Oh, okay. that would so make sense. It's, it's, we've kind of standardized touchdowns are just six points. But it also makes your quarterback uh, dangerous. But that's where I always would would double up. You you would find a great quarterback receiver combination, right. so you'd get double the oh, points yeah. every time, right? Well, that's a theory that some people mm -hmm. like to espouse by. I think it's bullshit. 
I don't think it matters. <laughs> this is not why. What's why I'm not playing anymore. Well, I'll tell you. In the '80s, when I was at the LA it's called Times, called handcuffing. By the way, <laughs> okay. a guy named Jim McCurdy. Remember Jim? Yes. He got Marino, Duper, and Clayton. Yeah. The year that they went crazy and they scored like a billion points. Unbelievable amount of stuff. See, I was always a guy stuck with Boomer Sice and Chris Collinsworth. Oh yeah. So you know they were not a great team, but. They were under the wire, under the radar, and you can always count on them for stuff. I'll never forget. Um, by the way, I'm 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 not having a stroke. It's just I'm so neurotic <laughs> of this thing. I'm just holding it in place. Um, I'll never forget. I, I was on a team with Chris Dufresne, who's the great college and uh, football and basketball writer, and he told me on Friday. He said, "Hey, activate this player and take this player off the receiver." And I said, "Oh yeah, sure, I'll do that." Yeah. Totally forgot. Wake up on Sunday morning, turn on the game, and the guy told me to activate, scored like four touchdowns. And so I had to call him, and I explained to him why I'd done that by sobbing into the phone. Uh, I'm so sorry, Chris. Yeah, and how just, do you, do yeah. you have a defensive... Sucks to suck. Yes. Uh, do, you have a, do you have a defensive scoring mechanism in this? Yeah, so it's all... It's a team defense effort. Okay. So you get so many points for points allowed, so many points for yards allowed, and then... If you get an interception, it's two points. If you get a fumble recovery, two points. Defensive touchdowns, all six points. Sacks okay. are worth yeah, so point. it's really developed. It's like a whole other thing now. I have no interest. None whatsoever. See, this is a thing that's gotten the NFL to explode, though. Right. Sure. Exactly. It's, it's now, it's the reason Red Zone exists. Right. I'm not watching Red Zone because I give a shit about the Chiefs. Yes. It's because I have Travis Kelsey and I got to see if he's going to score two which, touchdowns in 165 right. yes. yards. And which give keeps points. DirecTV's valuable possession in right. not only Sunday Ticket, but the red zone, which they created. But NFL Network has their own. Right. They, they, they give it out to free. They, they give it for free now. Yeah. It, absolutely. Everything yeah. but DirecTV. Right. So. Yeah. It's it, for people who are in it, it's the best. For people who are out, it's very annoying. It just because they're not, you're, you're actually not watching the same game. You're watching no, with I'm watching a completely exactly. different game. It's Except very, now that the gambling Supreme Court overturned that, you'll have a whole new influx of different gamblers who are ex ex betting on teams. Right. As they can, they did that in the exhibition. You remember the exhibition game we watched over at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings? Yeah. The game they wouldn't take off the TV. We mm -hmm. wanted to watch the Rams game and they were right. leaving the Cleveland New York Giants, New York Giants game. game. They were betting in the stadium. They were actually, that was the first game you could bet on in New York. That, that is the... <laughs> Absolute definition of a degenerate gambler. If you are betting on a Browns Giants preseason, and game. as it turned out, degenerate is the description. No, a degenerate gambler is if you're betting on Little League softball. <laughs> oh. Yes, that is degenerate gambling. Mm. Oh, I didn't do it, but I guarantee people were. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. And then the whole Buffalo Wild Wing experience we had was completely depressing. Did yeah. you see what they're looking into though? That's why we went. Okay. Because we wanted to sort of scam scam at the the. It was. It would have been a more of an awful situation if they were allowing gambling because the service was so bad, just with food and TVs. That add gambling on top of it, it would have been a horrific. No, 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 no. You add gambling, you add oodles and oodles of revenue, and then they get higher oh. extra people. Hey, look and at that. And then you get better service because I don't think you're so. going to be sitting there for six hours right. losing money. Oh. They're going to keep your ass in that seat. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. That's trickle looks, down. It looks good on paper, but with the people they hire there, it just it's not going to work. You know what didn't look good on paper? Those boneless wings. They, oh. they uh, odd orange. They were yeah. They were they were horrible McDonald's McNuggets and shrunken horrible. Okay, taste. but we're getting political again. Anyways, <laughs> this has so, been the most bizarre one we've ever done. Well, I was yeah. going to say, since you guys love to pick on millennials and everything, no, that's, no, that's no. one of the restaurants that's uh, been cited as millennials are killing buffalo wild wings because because it sucks that's why <laughs> and they demand and it does. not sucking and i agree yeah. and i agree it's pretty bad all right tom this has been very strange yes, we've been out of practice we just need to get some more reps again <laughs> so we're gonna really bone up on uh, geography <laughs> and wings and and, uh, and uh, countries countries we'll uh, we'll look into that anyways this has been a pleasure. It's been a something. I don't know. It's, it's been, been weird, something. but again, I'm getting a crick in my neck. If you lasted this long, this. thank you. Now, we still have a Twitter account. We still yes. have a Instagram account. Yes. What do we call it? The Drill LA? Yes. And and again, check us out on Game Takes. Every, every morning, we uh, get something out there, usually about 8 a.m. Listen to us on your drive-in. And we've even started to do something where a lot of the articles we'll read, we'll actually read them, put them on there, so you can... 
listen to them on your drive in and then pretend like you actually read the paper that morning and look really mini, smart. Mini podcast. Yeah. So basically, your life is a lie. Wait, hey, are you guys reading newspaper to people? Yes. Yes. Someone has to. <laughs> Someone has to, John. Have you ever been to an old folks' home? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say this used to be a. A That's radio right. service from Goodwill Industries. Yeah. Well, now it's a it's now a revenue it's upgraded. Stream. We've upgraded this. It's whole upgraded process. to the Tom Hope. Well, it's a revenue right. stream. That's right. a trickle, which right. which went dry about ten. Yeah, years it's ago. another. It's another. Yeah, it's another revenue stream. We'll never see anything from it. But <laughs> we is, offer so many platforms that produce no income. I, I don't know if this has been the saddest or the most humiliating show. <laughs> But you saw it. It all happened. And you watched it for free, of course. Thank you very much. We'll see it somewhere down the road. Thanks very much.